Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. A very warm welcome to this service on Trinity Seventeen. For news about the life of the cathedral, please do go to our website and to the news blog where you will find our weekly e-news. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled as brothers and sisters in God's family. We come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour. In what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you call us to fullness of life. Deliver us from unbelief and banish our anxieties with the liberating love of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it out of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do with my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its walls and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. 
He expected justice, but saw bloodshed. Righteousness, but heard a cry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him produce at harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read the scriptures? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing to our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken into pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parable, they realised that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We are speaking now in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Jesus is the reason. I love these olive wood handheld crosses. I've had them for years to give to individuals when I visit at home or in hospital, or just an encounter here in the cathedral. Canon Neil and I now have a store of them on our desk to give to people when the moment arises. They help me hold on to Jesus in the difficult times. I love the fact that since they are wood, everyone is different, unique, distinctive, just like you and I. They remind me that Jesus is the reason for so many things. In our gospel today, we hear again that Jesus is the reason. In fact, Jesus is the reason Matthew wrote his account of the solid rock in the center of our lives, the stone the builders rejected which became the keystone, the cornerstone. Some scholars unpack the parable in this way, that it is an allegory. It has an underlying meaning, something more beneath the surface. This doesn't mean that it's not true to life. Many of us will have known or have heard similar stories ourselves, recognizing this behavior in the world around us, behavior which stems from greed, and dishonesty. Here the underlying meaning is that of God's encounters with humanity through Israel and its people. For the vineyard represents Israel, the tenant farmers, the leaders and the landowner, God. The servants sent and rejected represent the prophets, before finally the sending and rejection of the Son is indeed just that, the rejection of God's own Son, Jesus Christ. But there is hope, for the new tenants are offered the land to produce good fruit from God's own creation. The church springs forth to cultivate the land and bring forth the harvest. But the action of the landowner isn't rejection of the Jews. It is the Jewish leaders who are the problem, with whom the conflict is held not Jews or Judaism. Judgment comes to those in charge, refusing to believe their own eyes that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. 
the stone rejected, which became the cornerstone, that Jesus indeed is the reason. One thing that I've found remarkable in our short, precious conversations since the cathedral reopened is how much the cathedral and its community means to you. How important and valued were the efforts made by all of us to stay connected to what we know and love. Appreciation of the reflections and recordings, the online worship, the prayers from choristers, the images of peace. How much people miss simply being here, worshipping together as a community, hearing the organ, the music, the cantors, the choir in its many different forms. Some might say that perhaps we are missing the point, that we are concentrating too much on the material things, the building and the things within and out with it, rather than God and Jesus. I would wholeheartedly disagree, for Jesus is at the heart of all that draws us, pulls us, binds us together in community. Jesus is the reason we have a cathedral at all, a place of encounter with God, each other and his son, the Messiah. Jesus is the reason the music is written and performed, the choir sings the office and the Eucharist, that we are uplifted, transported and transformed just hearing it. Jesus is the reason we come together in different groups now in the ways allowed within the cathedral or through the online initiatives which sprung out of the lockdown. Jesus is the reason that we hold people pastorally in our thoughts and prayers, in our outreach to the needy, those still at home, anxious and worried, those unwell in hospital. Jesus is the reason that many within our community started contacting and supporting each other through the crisis. Jesus is the reason why, no matter what the situation throws at us next, we will continue as a community of Christ. So wherever we might be going now in this crisis around us, we can still hold fast to the cross, hold fast to Jesus, hold fast to each other as disciples of Christ, as the body of Christ, come together in communion, worship and music, for we all know and we believe that Jesus is the reason. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high, and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, and in reunion with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Father in heaven, by his blood your Christ has ransomed us to you and made us a kingdom and priest to you, our God. As the angels minister to you in heaven, strengthen your church to serve you here on earth. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father in heaven, when the angels greet to the birth of your Son, we sang for joy, glory to the God, and peace to, on earth. Bless with Christ's peace the nations of the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father in heaven, your Son has promised to your children the care of the guardian angels, 
you look up upon your face, protected by the mercy on our neighbours, families and friends. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father in heaven, you give your angels charge over those who trust in you, to guard them in all their ways, to be with those in trouble, rescue them, and show them your salvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father in heaven, your angel declares, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Blessed indeed, says the spirits, for they may rest from their labours. For they take with them the record of their deeds, enfolding your love and all who come in faith to your judgment seat in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father in heaven, the angels sing by day and night around your throne. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, with Michael, Prince of the Angels, who contends by our side with Gabriel, your herald, who brings glad tidings, with Raphael, the protector, who ministers your healings. And with the whole company of heaven, we worship you. We give you glory. We sing your praise and exalt you forever. Amen. God is love. And those who live in love, live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you.
wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of our dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so let us pray with the disciples from this diocese and the disciples throughout the world. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Heavenly Father, as we participate with your people in these holy mysteries, we pray you now to grant to those who seek it your gift of spiritual communion with trust in your faithfulness and your abiding love. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us and make us continually to be given to all good works through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God 
and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship today. It's good that we can still keep connected to those who cannot attend worship in the cathedral. Another way we are developing to keep people connected is through a new e-bulletin. From the 18th of September, under the news and blog section on the main web page, there will be all the information you need about the life of the cathedral. We are hoping that you will be able to sign up to the e-bulletin and then it will be delivered automatically to your email inbox. So from the September the 18th, go to Liverpool Cathedral website and click on the news and blogs and the e-bulletin should be there. Thank you.